Isabela Tagliarini. I S A B E L L A T A G L I A R N I. Good afternoon, Ms. Tagliarini. Good afternoon. How are you? A little tense, but okay. You want to move up a little bit because the microphone? <coughs> move up a little bit. Speak up. Uh, okay. Better now? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Can you tell us how, how old you are? I'm 44 years old. And where are you from? I'm from Brazil. Okay. When did you come to this country? In December of 2010. Okay. Do you know the defendant, Eric Robinson? Not at that time. The question, do you know him? Yes, I do. Okay. And back in 2017, you knew him as well, correct? Yes, correct. Uh, back in 2017, August of that year, uh, where were you living? I was living in Plantation. Do you remember the address or no? 7201, I'm, I'm not so sure. North Coast 15th Street? Yes, perfect. And back in August of that year, who was living at that location? Back in August? Yes. Uh, it was me, Eric, and Nicholas Wilcox. Nicholas Wilcox. Mm -hmm. And back on August of 2017, how long were you living there? Prior to that. I moved there in July of 2016. Okay. And... You and Eric were boyfriend and girlfriend? Yes, we were. And Nicholas Wilcox, when did he move into that apartment? In the middle of June of 2017. And uh, were you dating both of them at that, at that point or no? No. Just Eric? Just Eric. Nicholas was a roommate, correct? It was the roommate. How many bedrooms in that apartment? Or that house? Three bedrooms. Master bedroom? A master bedroom, a bathroom inside, and then two other bed, uh, two other bedrooms, and a bathroom. So Nicholas would have his own bedroom? Yes, of course. And did you share a bedroom with Eric? Yes, we did. Specifically on August of that year, were you sharing a bedroom with Eric? Yes, I was. Okay. Now, at one point, uh, the defendant went to jail, correct? Yes, he did. Okay. Prior to him going to jail, to jail, were you still dating him? We were still officially together, but... Minor objection? You just saying, uh, rephrase your question. Prior to the defendant going to jail, were you dating Eric Robinson? Yes. Okay. And what is your relationship with Nicholas at that point? We were friends. I was working for him. <coughs> you mentioned that you were working for him. Yes, I was working for him. What did Nicholas Wilcox do for a living? He was a general contractor. Are you a general contractor? No, I'm not. Okay. How would you be working for him? Um, he offered me the job in the beginning to tape and to clean the places where he was working. And the majority of the time, which county were you working? Uh, we were in West Palm Beach, so Palm Beach County. Palm Beach County. Mm -hmm. After the defendant, Eric Robinson, went to jail, did you stay in the apartment? Yes, I did. Did Nicholas Wilcox stay in the apartment? Yes, he did. At any point, did you develop a relationship with Nicholas Wilcox? Yes. Uh, how long did it take? It take um, maybe three weeks. Okay. And uh, did you have any communication with Eric Robinson at that point? No, I didn't. Okay. 
You moved down to Nicholas Wilcox. I'm sorry? You moved down to Nicholas Wilcox? Yes. Um, <clears throat> drawing your attention to October of that year, um, did you personally have any knowledge of when Eric Robinson was supposed to get out of jail? No. Drawing your attention to October 5th of that year, do you remember that date? Yes, I do. The morning of that date? I do. Okay. Uh, the morning of October 5th, were you sleeping in the same bed as Nicholas Wilcox? Yes, we were. Uh, what, if anything, awoke you? What woke me up? Yeah. I woke up with Eric holding my mouth and my neck. And then I opened my eyes. The television was still on. And the, t the lights were on. You saw Eric on top of you, or was he on top of somebody else? He was on top of me. Okay. Tell me what else did you hear or see? Well, at that moment, uh, Eric made a question, not asking if I want to leave or die. And also telling me to be quiet, continue holding. I couldn't turn my head to any side, and I could hear Nicholas Wilcox struggling to breathe. What do you mean by that? It was a noise that will never leave my mind forever, horrible, of a person struggling. I couldn't see him, but I w he was struggling, terrible noise, like a, <laughs> a noise like this. What happened after that? Um, in my mind, I thought that, that Nick was gagged, or I didn't know he was hurt. Then Eric walked me out of the bed until out around the bed, I couldn't see Nick. At a glimpse of my eyes, I saw some thing on his face that looked like blood. Right. And Eric took me to the living room that was in front of our bedroom, sat me down, and he was telling me that he was still not sure if he was going to kill me too. Ask it uh, why I cheated on him and stayed with Nicholas Wilcox, and we could still listen Nicholas trying to breathe, and he said that he had to finish his job. Now let me <coughs> interrupt you for a second there. Okay. Uh, prior to you waking up with the defendant on top of you, holding your mouth. <clears throat> When's the last time you spoke to Eric Robbins? In person was the, in the morning he was going to the court and from there he was arrested. And <coughs> after that he went to jail and the first time he saw him was that morning, correct? Yes. Now, you mentioned that he took you out of the bedroom. How did he take you out of the bedroom? Continue holding my mouth and taking the cover over me, walking with me, until, and made me sit on the floor. Now, did you ever see him re-enter the bedroom? Eric? Yes. Yes, I was sitting right in... in at the door, and he he went back. What, did you see what he did? Yes. Can you 
tell the jury what you saw? He had a big piece of of um, a metal, dark metal, like uh, I didn't know the name before, but it was a big metal, and he was he was doing like hitting him several times and saying die motherfucker die motherfucker and and that's that's what he was doing until the noise disappeared how did you react i couldn't look i was so afraid so scared because i knew i was going to be the next what time of night was this uh, in my belief was 2.30 because as the television was on, there was the time there. So I saw 2.30 in the morning. Okay. What happens next? He continued talking to me, making questions. He told me, where is your medications for anxiety and depression? I said, it's inside the bedroom in the same drawer. So he told me, he got, gave me, told me to take four bars and then have some, some vodka so I could calm down and probably he could take control of my actions after that. You mentioned that he used a metal bar, something you said you didn't know the name of before. Do you know the name of it now? Yes. Uh, I know now as a crowbar. Do you know what happened to that crowbar? No, I don't know. He What's didn't tell me. What's the last time you saw that crowbar? The last time I saw was when we walked outside the house to the back side that there is a pool and was in the left side hanging to the door there with a plastic and some blood that was the last time he told me not to touch now you mentioned that this happened around you said 2 30 in the morning right yes now what happened between 2 30 and when the sun comes up what's, what's going on um, he, uh, Eric was preparing, uh, asking me if there was any, Eric asking me if there was, where were, there was black um, bags or something else, and, he, and somehow he came up with a tarp, silver tarp. Now, where did you get the silver tarp? I believe it was in the house, because that was Nicholas job. He was putting tarps in the roofs, in the roof of the houses because there was a hurricane. As, as a sidetrack, and I'll get back to the story, mm -hmm. <coughs> do you remember what kind of vehicle Nicholas was driving at this point? He was, he was driving a, a pickup, like a, I don't know the name, it was a big truck. What color? Silver. Silver? Uh, dark silver. Dark silver. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to what happened between 2.30 and as the sun's coming up. You mentioned the tarp, correct? Yes, the tarp. Now, what's, what, what was the tarp used for? He Eric used to wrap Nick inside this tarp. Now, to your knowledge, when he was beating the decedent, Nicholas Wilcox, Nicholas Wilcox was still on the bed, correct? Yes, he was sleeping before. Mm -hmm. How did Nicholas Wilcox, the decedent, uh, get off the bed and into the tarp? I didn't see that happening. And because of all the trauma, there are moments that it's some black in my mind. But I, I believe he just put him next to the tarp in the floor and took it off. Do you think you helped him? 
to put the body in the tarp? No, I didn't touch the body. Okay. And do you remember how the tarp was wrapped? Yes, I do. Tell us. He, he wrapped it like a burrito and he put two belts, one around the, the neck and one around the, 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 foot, the feet. I remember one of the belts Eric mentioning of the motherfucker was using my belt. The other, I don't know, was around the house. Did you have your cell phone on you? At that moment, no. Did you have a cell phone in the house? Yes, I did. Did you call the police? No, I didn't. Why not? I was too scared. As he's doing this, where are you in the apartment? Next to him. I could never leave his sight. That was his <clears throat> mandatory order to stay next to him. Now, Ms. Tagliarini, inside the bedroom where, <coughs> where uh, Nicholas Wilcox was murdered, <laughs> was there any blood in that bedroom? There was a lot of blood. Where? In the bed. In the walls, in the roof. Specifically talking about on the roof, what kind of what kind of blood was like it? splatters. Okay. At any point did uh, the defendant there Robinson say anything about that? Later in the day he wanted to clean and wanted me to clean all that. Now, at one point, the body is wrapped, like you said, as a burrito inside the tarp, correct? Correct. Uh, what happens next? Then he had to drag the body outside. Okay. And in one moment, right, uh, he dragged the body from the living room, from the bedroom to the living room, opening the door to go to the the pool, there was a grass, and he asked in one moment for me to help him because I believe it was stuck, was too heavy. He even said that. The body? Yes. And he finished going to direction of the gate, there was a gate in the back, and he put the body there. Now, you mentioned the gate. Where is the truck at this point? I saw the truck was back in, the truck was, fa was in, in the gate. The, the gate was open, and he, and the, and the truck was inside, but not completely. Just part. Who put the truck there? Eric. Well, let me ask you this. <coughs> At one point, Eric is outside, and he's putting the body in the truck? Yes. Uh, there's a front door to the apartment, correct? Correct. You could open it? Objection to leaving. Could you open it? Uh, I'll, I'll that question. Could you open it? I could have opened, but I couldn't in my mind. I was always scared to leave him. Okay. Once the body is in the truck, what happens next? He came back, and he, he said he had to go back to the house where he was staying. He told a name of a person, a male, he was staying there. He had to go before this person awake because he was using this person's car. He left you alone? He left me alone. How long? Not that much. I don't remember. I was so in shock. All he asked me was to try to pick all the clothes from Nick and put in bags well, while he, he was going. When, he said, when you said that he left you alone, how long, and I asked that question, but are we talking about minutes? Are we talking about a half an hour? Are we talking about an hour? 
I believe half an hour to an hour. And he left? He left. In what car? I don't know. The whole house was covered with, because of the hurricane, with plywood. I had no access to see through the windows. Did you see the truck backed up to the, backed up to the gate? Yes, because I went outside in, in the grass, so that's where I could see. So you left the body in the truck and the truck backed up? I don't understand. Well, you mentioned that the truck was backed up to the gate, correct? Correct. And you also mentioned that he put the body in the truck, correct? Yes. And that he left, correct? Yes. He went back with me in the house, gave, told me what to do, and, and left. Right. I don't know car. I don't you don't know what car he left? No. <coughs> and um, did you do as you were told? Yes, I did. What did you do? I started going on, on Nick's bedroom and picking the clothes and putting in a in a plastic bag, like he told me. Okay. And you had access to your cell phone? I didn't know where it was, because as soon as I woke up, he told me, don't, don't worry about the cell phone. I took both of your cell phones, mine and Nick's. So at that time, I had no idea where the cell phone was. At which point did you find it? while I went back to, to the bedroom and then was somewhere there, was not in where I left. I left plugging in the wall on the floor. But it's safe to say you found your cell phone. I found my cell phone. While he was away, correct? Yes. Did you call the police? No, I didn't call the police. Why? I Objection, ask the answer. <clears throat> Yes. I was so scared, so afraid, and I didn't trust the police at that time <coughs> at all. While he's away, and he told you that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said that he went to Chris's house, correct? Chris's house. <coughs> you were putting together Nicholas's clothes, correct? Yes, I was putting... Mm -hmm. Did you put them in garbage bags? In garbage, yes. Who told you to do this? Eric told me. At which point does he come back? Oh, he, came, he came back... was maybe one hour after the most, between half an hour to one hour after he came back. And do you remember what car he came back in? No. When he came back, what happened? Um, he asked me to to wear some lingeries and be sexy. He wanted to have sex with me. Did you? I did to survive. So this is right after he came back, correct? Right after he came back. Um, what happened afterwards? We changed it. And that's, a lot, uh, that's where, because looking now, I know a lot of things. They still are so blurry in my mind. I believe it because of home education, all trauma, seeing my fiancé being killed there. But I know that we went out from the house. He, he said he needed to go to the courthouse. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. At one point, you ended up at the Publix, which is right by the courthouse here, correct? Correct. How did you get there? In my memory, I got there inside his car, inside, inside the truck that we were. That's how I remember. Is that true? No. How did you get that? With his car, Cadillac. You were driving? I saw the video and I agree I was driving. Okay. Now when you got to Publix, he left you alone at Publix, correct? Yes, he did. 
And what time of night, uh, what time of day was that? Around eight o'clock, probably. People everywhere? Yes. And he left alone on the aisle? He left me alone, yes. And then he came back, correct? And then he came back. You had an opportunity to grab a stranger, grab a security guard, um, maybe even use the courtesy phone to call the police, correct? I had, but I didn't because I was so scared to be killed after he, he made it very clear. Any, any, anything I did, he would kill me. Even said he was gonna kill my kids in Brazil, we had connections. I'm gonna show you a CD, okay? Okay, okay. You had a chance to view some surveillance CD, correct? Correct. <coughs> and I'm going to show you one that's marked 4 G. I want you to take a look at this. Tell me if you recognize it. It's the, the public surveillance. You recognize it? Yes, I do. And that's the one that you viewed, correct? Yes. And does it accurately reflect uh, and show you and Eric at the public that we're talking about? Yes. Does it appear to be altered in any way? No. This one, I want to move it to evidence for tomorrow because it's 4G, Your Honor, state's evidence. All right, that'll be admitted. Uh, I think we're up to 84, correct? Yes. So that'll be uh, State's Exhibit 84. Permission to publish. You may publish. Reading, if you bear with me, because this is kind of a system that plays all the videos at once. Okay. Who's this? That's me. That's you. Mm -hmm. And you're by yourself pushing in a cart, correct? Correct. What are you shopping for? I wasn't shopping, I was just waiting him come back.
tag reading. Who's this? That's Eric. So he comes back <coughs> approximately six minutes later. Yes, it was very quick. Staggerini? Yes, yes. This is you again? Yes, that's me. This is you and him together, correct? Correct. <coughs> as you're it, as you're in the Publix, are you communicating as to where you are trying to find each other? I you remember. I don't remember. But do you think you have your cell phone? Yes. Remember what you're talking about at this point? No, I don't. Tagarini, it appears, and correct me if I'm wrong, you appear to be hugging him, correct? Correct. Can you explain that? I was afraid and I have to make him very sure that I was going to to be on his side and do whatever he told me, that I was not gonna run away. I was gonna tell everything he told me to do. anything at Publix? No. Now, <coughs> at the 
bottom of this video, and it's not very clear on this screen, but it, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can probably see it on your screen there because it's smaller. Uh, it says October 5th, 2017, 8.33, correct? Correct. To your knowledge, is, is that time correct? Yes. Ms. Tagarini, where is Nicholas Wilcox's body at this point? I believe it's in the trunk of his truck. Next to the plantation apartment or house? Mm, yes. Where did you go after this? I believe we went to the house. We change the cars. You change cars? Yes. From the Cadillac? From the Cadillac to the truck. To the truck. Who was driving the truck? Eric. You were in the passenger seat? Yes, I am. And where did you go? If you remember. I don't remember exactly the route, but I know he was looking for a place to dispose the body. Okay. Um, do you remember going to a couple different stores at least? Stores? Yes. Yes. I just don't remember a timeline. 